Here's how to get your university to tell you exactly how to get a first class. Hi, and welcome to The Law Simplified, the world's largest independent online law school platform. I'm your instructor, Shaveen Bandad Nayaka. There are often times when I've had to console my fast track and masterclass students on the frustrations that they face in terms of studying for any given module. Granted, there are some modules that are more difficult than others, but when you see the volume of content that any student has to go through throughout the course of an LLB or a GDL program, you'd be hard pressed to think why anyone would subject themselves to such torture in some instances. If you like the type of content that I make on this YouTube channel, do subscribe to The Law Simplified and leave a comment below of what other types of content that you'd like to see. If you are a first, second or third year law student, I would highly recommend enrolling in the comprehensive online law school platform, complete with theory, tutorial and workshop lessons based on the actual one-on-ones that I've conducted with first-class law students globally. Now, I started off this particular video by saying there is a method to getting the exact answers you require from your university on how to achieve a first-class law degree. Now, I must preface this somewhat by saying that it's not necessarily that they're going to tell you this outright. Rather, they've left breadcrumbs, so to speak, scattered across their module content and the material that they might provide to you in the form of fine print that you can assess and determine if you're tenacious enough what exactly you're going to have to do to achieve that higher grade that you feel you richly deserve. Three words define this secret. The module assessment criteria. What exactly is this and where do I find it? Now, truth be told, depending on the establishment that you're enrolled with, whether it is an institution locally or a university, the determination of what their module assessment criteria is and how transparent they are with their module assessment criteria will vastly differ. But essentially, if you are enrolled in a university that has an online platform on the one hand, some guided material, as well as a rubric or a structural overview of each individual module, the chances of you finding this module assessment criteria exponentially become greater. Why is this important then? On the one hand, a properly crafted module assessment criteria will not only indicate to you what they anticipate from a student who is a bare pass, who has crossed over the uh, 2-2 or a second lower criteria, 2-1, a uh, second upper criteria or a first class criteria, but will also indicate on a very specific level what material, what content and what sources are anticipated from each type of student. So for example, if you are in a university that prides itself on research, that prides itself on having the biggest portfolio in terms of subjects, the module assessment criteria would quite transparently be available to you in the form of either one document or several documents. Now, you need to put in the work for this. Um, get a hold of the access to your student portal, go through every nook and cranny, so to speak, of that platform to determine what exactly you are supposed to do for each module. Now, in some instances, and this I have personally experienced when advising students, you can even determine what the module assessment criteria is before you enroll in the university altogether. This is especially helpful if you want to first figure out what style of assessment on the one hand and how the marking criteria is set up on the other way before you even start to think about enrollment to that particular university. Why this is important is because whilst it is necessary for us to enroll in a university that 
A might be prestigious and therefore have potential in terms of the employment scape later on, as well as versatile enough to provide us with opportunities to select electives that other universities might not. It is also important at the end of the day to have a great classification that gives you a leg up, so to speak, on the competition. What's more, it's also relatively easy then when you are thinking of further study or scholarships or fellowships to have that calling card in place to say that you're not just a graduate of law, but you're a first class graduate. That being said, until the next time that we meet, have fun, stay safe, and as always, obey the law.